Hi folks, Rick Barry here with Dan Mum again for Monday Live on Facebook, or if I'm Alberto, live! I know, you put me to shame, <laughs> Alberto, you put me to shame with your energy levels, man. I, I gotta step my game up, so. He's good, I Yeah, and, see what and, I can do. Different energy level, yeah. more focused, he's, yeah. I, I was gonna say spastic, but that's not a good word. <laughs> no, he's yeah. a great guy, we had a great time. All right, so today, speaking of energy level, we're gonna talk about um, why working out is important. I mean, this is the perfect time. You're at home, you can be doing all kinds of stuff. So why is working out important, Dan? Oh my gosh, where do you start? Where do you start with this? Uh, well, the first thing I think would be what we talked about last week with maintaining some type of structure and regularity in your schedule. Right. And that, that translates directly in your real estate business with uh, how much regularity there is in your schedule. And from a time management perspective, that's huge. That's one reason. Another reason, mental toughness, uh, monotonous boredom, that's tough. That's something yeah. we have to deal with as real estate agents. You have to do the same thing over and over again. And that's kind of a grind and you have to push yourself through that repetitious boredom as Mike Berry calls it. Repetitious and, boredom, uh, yes. Yeah, so again, working out translates directly into your ability to do that. Working out's harder, right? I, I think it's harder to work out than it is to make sales calls. I mean, if you are uh, if you can do a really intense workout, yeah. anything after that's easier to be completely honest. Uh, Third reason would be, yeah, your energy and enthusiasm. It's right. higher. When you feel better physically, you just have more energy throughout the day. You're, you don't have these peaks and valleys. You don't have to be drinking a ton of caffeine all day. You just have more natural energy. That translates directly when you're talking to customers. And uh, so, yeah, those are a few reasons. What do you got? Yeah. All right. So um, I agree with every one of those. And who was I listening to? Um, I was listening to an audiobook not too long ago, and they said being consistent with your workout is kind of like taking a little Prozac and a little Ritalin every day. It makes you focus and it gives you energy. Yeah, focus when you need to be and relax when you need to be. Right, yeah. yeah. So I was like, that's an interesting way to say it, but really because you are releasing hormones and chemicals in your bloodstream that you wouldn't have access to. So, you know, it's like a lot of people that take drugs, they're looking for that euphoric feeling. Well, I don't know about you, but when after I work out, it's like the day, you, if you're working out and you're listening to audiobooks while you work out, Okay, it's really tough to have a bad day. You'd have to go out of your way to manufacture a bad day because even if things happen, they come your way, you're prepared to handle them. I mean, good days, bad days are all necessary as long as you're disciplined with your schedule. You know, I just interviewed Coco Durakin, the um, Rookie of the Year for Vegas last year, and he's basically said, have a schedule, follow it, you know, be disciplined, okay, and, you know, you will have a tremendous... Uh, I mean, everybody has the opportunity to be good at real estate. It's not like you need talent, you need uh, you don't need Michael Jordan, you don't need to be Kobe Bryant. You just have to be disciplined. It's a very level playing field. Would you yeah, agree? that's what I love about the business. And so, with with physical training, what's interesting about it is when a lot of times when agents ask me for advice about what to do with their real estate business, I ask them. How much are you sleeping? What is your workout schedule right. like? And they look at me like, what does that have to do with what I asked? And I said, it has everything to do with it. It has yeah. everything to do with it because that's that's the foundation of your business. If you don't feel good, if you're not healthy, how much time and energy can you really put towards doing right. what you should be doing every day? So yeah, don't overlook that. Like A lot of agents ask me like, hey, what should I be doing for my business? Should I try this marketing strategy or this? Or what do you think about this? And then I ask them a question about their sleep or their workouts and they're kind of annoyed like, well, do I really? It's like, yeah, you should yeah. be paying attention to that. I you should, it's the number one thing you should start with. It's literally the base of the pyramid. And yeah, those other things matter, but that's why we're talking about it today because you need to pay attention to it. Absolutely. And you know, the thing is, is that I, I agree with that 100%. And you know, a lot of people don't realize how good, and you just mentioned it, sleep. You know, most people, seven to nine hours, seven being the minimum. I, I, if I get seven in a row, I'm a stack. Okay, seven for me is good, but you may be eight, you may be nine. I think it depends on your age too. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so we okay, so we've, we've if you've made the commitment to add that in, or if you're already doing it, good for you. So in these crazy times, you have your gym at home anyway, don't you? Yeah, and a lot of people are trying to do that now. So I was right. lucky to kind of have some stuff before. Um, so yeah, a few ideas or tips, and I've this is all from experience because we're all new with this, right? No one knows really exactly, or no one expected this. Uh, one thing that I've found is really important is that you need to find some way of having some kind of accountability or training partners or people to do it along with you. It's really, really tough to do it by yourself. Now, I'm not saying gather in groups, obviously. Social distancing is really important, but you could do things virtually. You could do Zoom calls, workouts over Zoom calls. I've seen that in plenty yeah. of gyms. 
Um, and just having people to just have a little text group with a couple of buddies that you work out with and just hold each other accountable and, and do that every day. I think that's a really important thing because when you're trying to, you can do it on your own. That's what some people say is like, well, you should be able to not need anyone's support and just do it all on your own and motivate yourself. And that's true. Ultimately, if it came down to that, you should be able to, but it doesn't mean that that's optimal. Yeah. The, the best way to get yourself in good physical condition I've found is to put yourself in an environment where you're likely to succeed. Don't fight against your environment. That applies to a lot of things. You want to put yourself in an environment where you're likely to succeed with it. And when it comes to working out, that applies to real estate too. Uh, mm -hmm. But when it comes to working out and physical training, yeah, you should have people around you that are supporting you in that. So. Absolutely. Yeah. You can even watch uh, videos and do exactly what they're doing. And I, I did that for a while too. I had a personal trainer for a while. Then you get into a zone, I think, where uh, it, although it is optimum to have other people in on it. I love the Zoom idea. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So part of what I'm doing now is because I don't go to the gym. I always go to the gym is I'm using bands, you know, like, uh, like bands that um, are set for different gauges. You know, um, I like the heavy to medium ones. And I mean, there's so many things you could do. I've gone down to now where I've isolated back to different body parts on certain days and now I'm running. My knees had to get used to that. I run for a while and I walk fast and I run so I keep my heart rate up. I started at three miles, I'm up to five now and then I do my bands workout just like an all body workout for a couple days and then I do individual. There's so many things I'm figuring out that you can do for your chest, your triceps, your back, your biceps, your shoulders. Shoulders are killing me with the, with the bands. So there's so many things you can do. Go on YouTube and watch them, but you can design your own. And once you start doing it, like I started, uh, you've, you, you uh, come up with all kinds of new exercises that you can do too. Yeah, so I don't know, Blaze from the office, me, him, and a friend of ours, Oscar, we run every Friday. And yeah, we just maintain six feet and we just run together. And that's our way of uh, you know having a little group workout, right. something that you couldn't do normally. And it's just once a week. It's not a crazy commitment. That's cool. That's another thing when it comes to training is especially when you're establishing a new habit, you want to aim low. That's what I call it, is you aim low. If your aim is too high, it makes it really tough to adhere to that and stick to something new. So if you're having trouble getting started, which a lot of people are right now, just aim low and, and create some type of commitment that you can stick to. Uh, so we just started running every Friday, and so now it's just become a little routine for us, and it's easy, and That's it's a nice cool. little thing, gets us out of the house. The weather, at least here in Vegas, is beautiful, so it's a good, good little habit to get into. Good little group activity with maintaining social distancing. Yep. Okay, so there's a bunch of ideas. Anything you want to add? Uh, How about the, the numbers? Do you have, the numbers like uh, for MLS, have you looked at them? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, the Not a huge change. The pricing hasn't changed a whole lot here right. because of the fact that it's a lagging indicator. So it's prices now are indicating, if you really think about it, a deal that just closed today went under contract 30 to 40 days ago. So what is that? That's middle of March, just right. about? So that was before things have kind of peaked. And yeah, most of those transactions, the buyer and the seller probably didn't renegotiate the price in the middle of the deal. Sometimes that happens, but usually not. Right. So what that means is the prices that we're seeing now haven't really, they're not reflecting what's really going on now, but I don't think they've really changed much here. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, or? that's part of it. And then how about transaction numbers? Like how many mm -hmm. under contract, how many closings? Because I know that the week after it happened, it was around in the mid six to 700, right. normally being around 900, right. 950. How, have they, are they I haven't looked at closings. I'm looking at new contracts, right. new things going under contract, and it's still about the same, like five to five fifty number per week. Okay, so down from what would have been like six weeks ago. About six, six to seven. So it's off about 15, 20 percent. Yeah, that's about what we're seeing too. Yeah. yeah. So my point in asking Dan that is he keeps track of them because he's super analytical on top of it. Yeah. And you should all look. I'm not analytical, but I used to know that about my market. I used to know my own numbers. So you still need to know that. And, and as far as you're working out too. Keep track. Yeah. So, okay. This has been great. Yeah. That's it. Get physical. That's you right. do something for you because it really translates to your head too. And if you're like me, my mind is a terrible neighborhood some days when I get up. <laughs> I don't go there alone. Okay. Yeah. I listen to audiobooks. And, and audiobooks actually uh, motivate me to work out too. So, mm -hmm. keep it rolling. We'll pick this up. We'll be back Wednesday at 9 a.m. You guys are the best.